This is my review of the Sony's A6000 camera, which I've had for uh, six months or so now. I bought it as an alternative to use or a partner to use with my RX10 camera. So it's quite an interesting thing to compare with the RX10 as well. Um, so of course, compared with the RX10, uh, this is interchangeable lens camera. So you see here, I've got the 10 to 18, which is, uh, what is it? 15 to uh, 27 or 28 um, super wide zoom lens, which is a really nice lens. Uh, I tend to use this quite a lot of the time and I tend to use it on the A setting on the camera, on the dial, because uh, that way I, well, aperture priority is the one I like to use. And I even use the little pop-up flash occasionally since I read somewhere that uh, somebody put the little tip on of doing this to it if you want to use bounce off the ceiling and stuff. And that certainly takes away the harshness of the thing if it's pointing direct like that. So this little spindly flash, actually pretty useful little gadget. Unlike the RX10, which you can't do that, you can't get, you don't have that sort of design is slightly different. Uh, what I don't like about this camera, and I should right here, I don't like these wheels on the camera. Uh, actually, this one may be slightly better than the RX10 because the RX10 is very stiff. It's kind of imprecise. It's quite difficult to use that if you just want to adjust one stop of shutter speed or um, aperture or something, if you if that's what you've programmed the dial for. So it's not so good. It's all right, you can live with it, I guess. It's got quite a lot of customizable buttons. So you see here, this little, this one here, I've got it set for choosing my focus mode. So quick selection of focus mode, um, AFS, maybe AFC, I don't, use the AFA at all, that's the automatic one. And the one at the bottom, DMF, uh, that's okay, or manual focus. Use manual focus a lot if I'm using my uh, alternative kind of prime lens, because this is a Samyang 85 millimeter and has no automatic function with the camera at all. If you use this, then you use this in manual mode. And one of the other features then becomes really good with this camera, which is the uh, focus, focus peaking, absolutely fantastic. So if you're using focus peaking with your um, prime lenses or maybe with telephoto lens, actually you can get spot on focus really quite quickly with this thing. So that's a really great feature. The focus peaking, tremendous with the Sony camera. Um, fast, yeah, once you've got this switched on, it takes a second to switch on maybe, not too, not too bad, but the operations are so quick. So to focus on an object, very sharp. Reactivity, when you press the shutter, it's quick, you know, there's no lag, no delay. So it's significantly faster than the RX10, the general, with that type of operation. And I have actually found, uh, in fact, um, if you even use the tracking mo uh, tracking function, so if you're gonna use the camera in um, um, 10 frames per second mode, which is real fast. So the shutters, uh, if you choose the drive, so I've got my drive set here, Okay, so you can set up to 10 frames a second with that, or maybe 11 frames a second, which is pretty fast. Sports action, very good. If you use the tracking associated, and you can set tracking with your center button, for example, you can focus on an object, it's coming towards you, you've selected it, and the camera will track that moving object as it's coming towards you, and you can fire off 10 frames a second, and you will get some real sharp pictures out of that. Maybe six of them out of the 10 will be really good usable pictures. So for sports mode, it's actually surprisingly good, especially, for example, with the wide angle lens like I'm using here to get up close. That's great. So uh, it's a bit of a revelation and especially compared with the RX10, it's so good for uh, action photography, I would say. Um, one of the other things which I haven't written on there, which is great and it's slightly better than the RX10, is the connection of the system to the mobile phone. So one way you can do it is with the NFC if you get these things in the right place. Touch them together, you'll hear a camera go beep, and then NFC starts, but of course I haven't got it set up. It didn't seem to work that time. It's kind of a bit, now it's working. You see, uh, eventually the two units will talk to each other. So this is a good demo for you, in fact, to see if you can put up with, the, um, with this performance. Take some time. Once the link is established, <laughs> connecting, hello. Now it's uh, finally got there, I think. And now you can see the camera and the remote control are in sync together. So you can uh, put your camera somewhere, you can see what's in the picture. And then, hit that button. 
you can take your picture. So that's a pretty good thing. So it gets your picture straight to your mobile phone. You can email it. So for hands-free operation, uh, selfies or, um, well, if you want to do remote control, there's the way to do it. That's really good. And the other nice function is if you want to, if you've taken, say, 50 photos on a particular date today, you can download the lot via Wi-Fi to your, to your mobile phone and they come as small files. So even if you've got um, 10, megabyte, 10 megabyte pictures on your phone, the one on your, sorry, on your camera, the one sent to your phone is about 500K or something. It's a real small file version of what's taken on the camera. So that's really fantastic. So you can quickly up them, upload them to a website or to your friends, but keep the original big files on your SD card until you've done something with them on your PC. So that's a terrific thing. Um, what else have I said? Light, well, yeah, light. The camera body itself is really lightweight and quite small. And if you use the, um, if you use the, uh, what's his name? The standard lens that comes with the camera, usually, which is the power zoom, 10 to, um, what is it, 17 to 50, little power zoom thing. And you can see this little cute thing here pops open and uh, this is quite a fast little lens if you see here you've got this uh, ability to oh, that's interesting oh, that's not working uh, well I was going to say power zoom oh yeah here it goes do you see it working now the little dinky power zoom or you can just ram it manually like this it's kind of clunky and rattly but the performance is pretty good you know See, zoom, focus, on the edge of the camera. Ah, it's nice. I don't use this very much because I um, kind of just don't like the clunk, the clatteriness of it and stuff. So this is not my go-to lens. I did tell you um, you can use uh, non-Sony lenses with it, but of course you lose all the automatic function. And this one. It's a, a Samyang lens. In this case, you have to turn it to manual. And this dial is so difficult to use. It's so kind of stiff. That's one of the things about the camera which is bad is all these dials. It just could be so much nicer. A little nitpicky thing, but uh, in it, there's somebody at the door. That's the end of my video review. Well, I hope you enjoyed that.